Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, you will learn how to read candlestick patterns like a professional trader. This is even if you have no experience beforehand. And here's the good thing, I will explain a simple method to read the candlestick patterns without memorizing a single pattern. That's right, you don't need to buy heart any of these patterns. So let's get started. Candlesticks are a way to show the market prices of a security on your chart. It's not the only way to represent it. We have other ways of plotting them like bar chart, lion chart, etc. But the candlesticks are one of the more popular approaches. The candlestick usually consists of two parts, a real body and shadows or wicks. Also, when you are dealing with candlesticks, you must be aware that there is a 4 price point for every candle on the chart. These price points are the opening price, the high price, the low price and the closing price for the same period or simply we call them as OHLC. The real body of the candlestick shows the open and close prices while the shadows on the top and the bottom of the body shows the high and low prices for that particular period. The shadows looks like wicks and hence they are called as candlesticks. The upper wick signifies the high of the period and the lower wick signifies the low of the period. The high is the highest price point of the candle at a particular time and the low is the lower price point of the candle at a particular time depending upon the time frame you are trading on. Candlesticks generally have two popular colors, green and red. Sometimes it might be white and black depending on the settings that you use. But most commonly it's green and red. And a very important feature is that for green and red bars or candles, their opening and closing prices are at different locations. The color of the body of the candlesticks determines if the candlestick is showing a bullish or bearish price movement. That is, if the opening price is less than the closing price, then the body of the candlestick is green or white. Similarly, if the opening price is more than the closing price, then the body of the candlestick is red or black. The longer the real body, the more bullish or bearish the candle is. There are so many candlestick patterns out there, ranging from engulfing candlesticks, shooting stars, hammers, spinning tops, dojis, etc. to name a very few. So if you were to learn all these patterns, it would seem very hard and confusing. But don't worry, because we have got an easier way to understand what each candlestick means and identify the strength or priority of each of them. To learn this method, all you have to understand is just two little things. Number one is the open high low close or the OHLC of the candles. And number two is to figure out who is more dominant in the market, whether it is the bulls or the bears or simply the buyers or the sellers at a particular time period. Let's start our discussion on the first category of candlesticks. These candlesticks are called as marbosus. Let's look at the first type. Since the candle is a green one, it is a bullish candle. It has a big real body but has no wicks or shadows on either the upper or the lower end. So we know that the longer the real body, the more bullish the candle is. The OHLC of the candle is as follows. Since it is a bullish candle, the buyers are under control. So the closing price is greater or higher than the opening price. Since there are no wicks on either side, the high and low prices coincides with the close and open prices respectively. As a rule of thumb, the wick of a candle indicates price rejection or opposition by the opposite party. In case of a bullish marabosu, the open and low prices coincides and similarly the high and close price coincides which means that there is no selling pressure from the bears. That brings us to the conclusion that bullish marabosus are the strongest bullish candles we can find on a chart. But we have to be flexible with patterns. That is, we have to first quantify and verify. Because in the market, the patterns generally don't occur exclusively the same way as it is mentioned in those textbooks. So let's look at this green candlestick pattern 
where the price has closed higher for the period. It has opened lower and closed higher which means it is a bullish candlestick and there is a small lower wick and a small upper wick. But the high and low prices are so close to the open and close prices which means there is a very weak selling pressure from the bears. So in real market conditions, we can actually consider these candles as bullish maribosos because even though there was a slight selling pressure, it is still a strong bullish candle. Now moving on to bearish maribosu which is similar to the bullish maribosos but this pattern is a strongest bearish pattern. For a bearish candle, the open prices are higher than the closing prices. This is because the sellers are willing to sell at all the available prices. A bearish maraboso also indicates that there is so much selling pressure in the that the participants actually sold at every price point during the day so much so that the stock closed near the low point of the day. In case of a bearish maraboso, the high price and the open price coincides while the low and closing prices coincides. The candle has a big real body with no wicks on either end indicating a strong selling and a complete lack of buying or opposition from the bulls. As mentioned earlier, we can be a little bit flexible when trading in real markets. Now let's look at the second category of candlesticks, the pin bars. The first category of pin bars are the hammers and hanging man. Talking about hammers, a pin bar is said to be a hammer when it appears at the bottom of a downtrend. The hammer consists of a small real body at the upper end of the trading range with a long lower shadow. The longer the lower shadow, the more bullish the pattern is. Generally, the prior trend for a hammer should be a downtrend as mentioned. We should visualize the hammer pattern in the following manner. The market is in a downtrend. So bears are in absolute control over the markets. When a hammer forms, the price goes even lower and it forms a new low price. The price action of hammer formation indicates that the bulls attempted to break the prices from falling further down, which simply means that the bears tried to bring the market lower, but they did not succeed in their attempt to do so because the bulls generated a lot of buying pressure so much so that the price closed near the open of the candle. This action by the bulls has a potential to change the sentiment in the stock. So we can say that hammer is a reversal pattern and a hammer pattern could indicate a bullish reversal in the market. Now moving on to the hanging man, a pin bar is said to be a hanging man when it appears at the top of a trend. Similar to the hammer pattern, the hanging man is also a reversal pattern except the fact that it is a bearish reversal pattern. A hanging man signals the market high. Here's how you should visualize the hanging man pattern. The market is in an uptrend, hence the bulls are in absolute control over the market. A hanging man at the top of the trend indicates that the bears have managed to make an entry. This is emphasized by the long lower shadow of the hanging man, which signifies that bears have tried to break the stronghold of the bulls because the bulls tried to push the prices higher, but the bears managed to bring in so much selling pressure that the price closed closer to the open price, creating a small real body. And there is a high probability that the market trend would reverse and the hanging man pattern is a good indication that bearish sentiment is about to prevail in the market and it is a good time to short the stocks. Now the second category of pin bars goes by the name of shooting stars or inverted hammers depending on where it is formed on the chart. Talking about an inverted hammer generally occurs at the end of a downtrend. This is the weakest bullish candle that you can find in the market. We can see that the range of the candle or the real body is very small. Also the open and closing prices are close to each other. The long wick suggests that the bulls tried to take the price higher but there was a big selling pressure by the bears. So it indicates that the weak buyers are in control of the market and there can be a shift in the sentiment. So we can say that even though a green candle was formed, the sellers are actually in control of the market. The inverted hammer is generally accepted as a price reversal candlestick pattern just like the hammer where the trend shifts from a downtrend to an uptrend. 
but if you were to ask me which signal would you trade the hammer or the inverted hammer i would definitely go for the hammer pattern because the hammer pattern gives a much stronger indication of a trend reversal than an inverted hammer pattern this is also due to the difference in selling pressures in both these cases now moving on a pin bar is said to be a shooting star when it occurs at the end of an uptrend indicating a price reversal similar to an inverted hammer it also has a real body with the open and close prices close to one another it also has a large wick on the upside indicating that the bulls tried to bring the price up but they were overpowered by the bears who pushed the price below the open price so the shooting star is a strong bearish pattern it is stronger than the hanging man pattern that is formed in the uptrend this is because the sellers were more in control when the shooting star was formed rather than during a hanging man pattern now let's move to the third category of candlesticks we can clearly see that the candles have a small real body a small real body indicates the open and close prices are quite close as we have discussed so far the upper and the lower shadows are almost equal in length since the open and close prices are close to one another the color of the candle doesn't really matter now talking about the upper shadow the presence of the upper shadow tells us that the bulls did make an attempt to take the market higher however they were not successful in their attempt if bulls were truly successful then the real body would have been a long green candle as seen before in case of marabosus hence this can be treated as an attempt by bulls to take the market higher but they were not successful at it similarly the presence of lower shadow tells us that the bears did attempt to take the market lower however they were not successful in their effort if they were really successful then the real body would have been a long red candle as in case of a bearish marabosu hence the bears attempt to take the market lower can also be treated as an attempt which was not successful so here neither the bulls nor the bears could establish an influence or a superiority in the market which is evident from the small real body what this means is that there is an indecision between bulls and bears they are not able to clearly influence the market direction so this type of candlesticks is called as spinning tops which are actually indecision candlesticks Now let us consider two situations where spinning tops can be formed and let us discuss what the outcomes are. Now what if the spinning tops were to occur in a downtrend? So during a downtrend the bears are in absolute control as they are able to take the prices lower. A spinning top in the downtrend indicates that the bears could be consolidating their position before resuming the trend it can also be seen as an attempt by the bulls to arrest any further price fall but are they really successful because if the bulls were to be really successful it would have resulted in a strong bullish candle rather than a spinning top so clearly there are two foreseeable situations or outcomes with equal probability in this case Number 1 either there will be another round of selling and the market will continue with its flow or number 2 the markets could reverse its directions and the prices would increase as a trader you need to be prepared for both the situations that is for either a reversal or a continuation an obvious situation persists in the uptrend also now lastly let's talk about the dojis so dojis are similar to spinning tops except that it does not have a real body This means the open and closing prices are equal. So doji is an important candlestick pattern as it provides very crucial information regarding the market sentiment. By a textbook definition, doji suggests that the open price should be equal to the close price, which indicates that the real body does not exist. The upper and the lower wicks can be of any length and the color of the candle does not really matter because the prices are very close to each other. The dojis have similar implications as spinning tops as we have discussed just now. So whatever we have learned from spinning tops applies to dojis as well. So doji also conveys indecision in the market meaning that the bulls and bears are confused whether to take a trade. Both dojis and spinning tops ask the trader to remain cautious in the market. There are a lot of other candlesticks but those mentioned so far is enough to understand the idea of similar candlesticks that forms in the chart now let us arrange the candlesticks from strongest to the weakest 
So first of all, we will consider the bullish candles and arrange them in the order of their strength. Moving on, let us arrange the bearish candlesticks in the order of their strength from strongest to weakest. A gentle reminder at the end of the video would be not to trade these candlesticks in isolation because more the confirmations the better. The key thing that I am trying to bring across is that you understand what each individual candlestick pattern means and afterwards you can use these tools and techniques that you have learned and make it a part of your trading plan when you consider different elements of price action which we are going to learn in the upcoming episodes of this training. And finally, if you think you now have a better idea of candlesticks, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.